plein. Okay, last time, last time, last time. people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kobana Shimange and this is how I do things. The show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things. Now you can take it as advice, use it, don't use it, it is completely up to you. Now in today's show we're getting a little hot, we're getting a little steamy and we're talking about things that happen under the sheets or maybe on top of the sheets, on top of the table, under the table, wherever you prefer to do it. Talking about those ladies who've got a ring on it and they've realized that, you know what, in life I'm stuck with this one. I'm stuck with this one people till I die. Just this one. Me, this one, to let's do it. How are we going to make this one work? You get married and you realize you're stuck with this one. You've got to make this one work. So if you want a little more, or you want a little less, or you want something different, you need to talk and verbalize those things with your man. But how exactly do you make that work? It can get a little awkward. And yes, you would be surprised that there are so many couples who struggle to actually bring up that conversation. You guys got married, you liked how you did it before. But as time goes on, you may start to think, what if we tried this? What if we did that? And now you're thinking to yourself, how am I gonna tell him? I need to strategize here. Now, if you want to send me any of your questions, whether it is about style or motherhood or being a wifey, a boss, or just being a woman, head over to my Instagram at Kopanashimange and look for this picture right here. Click on the pink box or reply and let me know what question or scenario you'd like me to talk about in my next video. But for now, let's get into this hot and steamy topic. The thing that makes this topic a little awkward is you don't know how to approach it without hurting someone's feelings. Also, I don't know about you guys, but we grow up quite conservative. So the sex talk doesn't usually happen. So when you get married, you think to yourself, how am I going to talk to this? How am I going to approach it? Do I make him a cup of coffee first, bring it to him, full meal, and then say, ooh, cha papa. Um, well, one other way, maybe you should, and then, because you also think to yourself, you can't serve the man Nando's day in and day out, Monday to Sunday, Nando's, just all day. No, 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 no. Maybe it needs to suspend from the air. Maybe it needs this to be there and that to be there. You know, some things may need to change. The, you know, can't be eating lemon and herb, Nando's, full chicken every day, all day. It gets boring. Anyone will get bored with just Nando's. You need to find a new way to do things. And it can't just be you trying new things because then you'll be there getting into action and all of a sudden this man is seeing you do different things is gonna be like, wait, what are you doing? You don't want that. It gets awkward. Here's the thing. As a couple, you should be speaking about this as often as you possibly can. Get used to saying it. Six, 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 six. Making love. How are we going to talk about it? How are we going to become comfortable with it? How are we going to explore and make sure that this one, this one thing that you are stuck with is a brand new thing in, you're in and you're out. Think about it this way. What's his is yours and what's yours is his. So your lady parts are also his. His man parts are also yours. You guys have joined together and have equal part shares in this company. Every year you need to have an AGM and quarterly assessments and as often as you possibly can talk about it to make sure that you guys are both happy with what is going on. I know this may make you blush. I may turn red during this video. Mare, it's fine. I'm also married. We all need to learn and we all need to make sure that we are happy in the sack. We need to keep this relationship going as long as it possibly can and in the sack the good good that happens, the situations between the sheets, knocking boots, making good, that needs to be tops all the time. Tops all the time. Not just for him, but for you too. You can't be bored with just this one. You've got this one till you die. This one needs to be happy. That one baby that you're stuck with. You need to be happy with it until until. So here are the five do's followed by the five don'ts. Number one, I know I said that there needs to be an AGM and quarterly meetings and assessments, 
but don't make it formal don't say that listen uh papa let's talk about this kafaifine you can't do that you're gonna freak the man out every single time somebody says hey we need to talk you're just like what did i do i am sorry before somebody knows you're just like i'm sorry what did i do sorry 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 sorry, sorry. don't do that don't make it formal like I said, it needs to be something that you guys talk about as often as you possibly can. So formalizing it will make people really tense. And you need to be open about this. We can get shy. We can get embarrassed because maybe we don't know all the things we want to know. So making it formal may make someone withdrawn. It can make it very awkward. And that's not what you want when it comes to talking about sex in your marriage. Now, number two is the complete opposite. Don't spring it up on him. Don't be like, sneak attack, let's talk about sex. Don't do that. You need to make sure that it is as informal as possible. Introduce the topic. So tell your man, tell your husband and be like, listen, love, I'd really like to talk about sex, you know? How are things going for you? And if he wants to talk about it later, say that, okay, fine, we'll talk about it at dinner. One thing that I have done and continue to do is I just let my husband know, I'll be like, husband, let, can we talk about sex later tonight? Usually, in his mind, he says we're going to do it, <laughs> but I'm making an appointment to talk about it. And men tend to think that way. But the more you guys actually tend to talk about it, usually those meetings about it end up with the action. Number three, don't bring it up immediately after sex. Don't do that. You guys have just made love. It's nice. The things they should be talking about is what went well maybe here and there there might be some constructive you know some critique here i would try stay away from that because it does make a person feel inadequate it's just like all right if i did all of those things wrong then what did i do right did you even enjoy yourself were you even there did you even like it oh my gosh i failed <sighs> but when you want to try and bring up a an a awkward conversation or something that is different or something that you guys have never done before then you may want to give it a little bit of a breather live in the moment that you just had each other that you just enjoyed being with each other once you're done with that then you can bring it up so let the steam die down let the sweat on your body just dry nyana, before you bring up that conversation number four it's not about him it's not just about you it's about we so don't make it all his problem that he's doing this wrong and he needs to do less of this he needs to try something different sex is a we thing we 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 need to do this we should try this i was thinking we do that it's a two-man dance you know the two-man tango so you need to think about it that way. Your conversation should have a whole lot of we and less I and use, right? So you want to make sure that this is a partnership thing. You both need to get pleased. You both need to be happy. You may be thinking to yourself, I need to be more satisfied in this situation. There are so many couples where the woman still needs to find a way for the man to give her an orgasm. How does she reach her climax when he is helping? And bringing up that conversation, it's not just a me, me, me and a you, you, you. It's a we. How do we work together to make that happen? And number five, don't assume that he knows how to please you. Yes, he may have gotten a few things right in the past and currently, but if you do want things to change, if you want to introduce something different, if you want to talk about how things can spice up a little bit, be different, do this, do that, then you shouldn't assume that he knows how your system works. He doesn't. Don't assume it. Talk about these things. And it may be that he's been asking himself these questions and doesn't know how to bring them up. So if you bring them up first, it makes it a little less awkward. Remember, we don't want to make anybody feel inadequate. We don't want to make anybody feel awkward. The conversation is already awkward. The both of you can be awkward together. And remembering that not assuming that he knows everything will help him learn more and it will help you learn more. All right, so let's move on to the do's. The first thing that you want to do, number one, is that you want to start with the good there must be something that he's doing right because why would you be married to this man if you got it all wrong there must be something 
something nyana must be there if it's just a six pack just say baby whip out the six pack you're done i'm on the floor dripping let him know whatever it is you need to start with the good if you need to list those things if you need to tell him that yo when you do this fireworks when you do this explosions when you do this waterfalls you need to let him know right so start with the good and it's a give and take thing so it's not just about you yes i'm talking to you lady but it's also about your husband so start with the good in the conversation let him know what it is that you like and ask him what do you like what do i do right for you because you want to know that you need to keep doing that thing or maybe expand on it so when you nibble here my love i feel the tingles in all the right places so maybe he needs to find out how can i expand on that maybe want to ask you some questions maybe ask father google it's all up to you it's all up to him number two is that you want to be clear about what you want now i know if this is the first time you guys are trying to have this conversation and you want to have a nice lengthy productive conversation about this you may not actually know what you want but you you do want to approach the conversation knowing that i want to leave here with a plan okay so you might not know the exact things that you want but you must at least have a point to the conversation the point to the conversation usually is let's do more of this let's do less of that or let's do this differently let's explore let's have a bit of adventure let's maybe try to flip things over we're always like this maybe let's do this or we're always vertical let's try horizontal number three is that you want to be honest okay now honesty means that you don't know everything honesty means that listen i'm shy about this i do want to please you my husband i just don't know what to do or my husband i want you to please me a little bit more how do we make that happen or husbandy let's try this i'm curious about that how do we get that done so you definitely want to be as honest as you possibly can if you don't know something say so because next thing you'll just be there and you won't know what to do with the thing he'll be like my love i've seen this can you maybe try when we get to bed later tonight oh guys you'd be so surprised it's not uncommon to get married and not have the 411 on oral sex and your man may be like my love i'd like you to try you know just to beat the back a little bit you know let's try touch each other before we get into the action and you're thinking to yourself oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh where do i start what do i do teeth i don't know you need to ask him and if you both need to explore about it you can actually talk in action right you can have physical orientation so if you guys actually want to be honest about things and learn about things sit in front of each other naked so shelling it's fine and you guys can explore each other learning you can make it a learning experience in the classroom together learning about each other if you don't know about these things it makes it more fun but you have to start by being honest and say you know what my husband i actually don't think i'm doing this thing right you know i saw it on tv and i tried it with you and you didn't say anything honesty right number four ask for his input you don't want to just take over the conversation talking about what you want what you think you should do ask his input ask him what he wants has he seen something that he's curious about is there something that he may not like is there something that he wants you to do more something that you want him to do less you need to ask him about it some guys may be a bit shy to approach the situation you may have gotten into a marriage where you're the freaky one and he needs to learn and catch up but if you ask him for his input it raises you guys up to the same level or you may have married a freaky dick man and you're just trying to catch up and you're just like i don't know where to start my husband you are just too freaky for me but i'm willing to learn right so you want to have his input you want to make sure that you meet each other on each other's levels there are couples who get pleased and turned on by different things but you're not going to find out if we don't both communicate about the things that turn you guys on he may like whips and chains and some nights may be like love i'll come there wrapped in all the chains you want me to be wrapped and i am your i'm here for you 
And then on another night, you may like feathers and to be touched and to be spoken to smoothly. Like Eddie Zondi, right? You may want him to come into the room and say, hey, baby. If you guys know what you like, you don't have to like the same things. But if you know what turns each other on, you guys can swap. You guys can play roles, but it starts with input from both parties. And number five, and you know I always keep the best for last. The both of you need to make a commitment to exploring, learning, and trying new things. Now you may want to have, like I said, that AGM, that annual general meeting about the vagina and the penis and where they meet to make the love. How are you guys going to improve that? So when you guys meet and talk, always be open to learning and trying new things and exploring. And if you guys can make a commitment to trying something new every now and then, every month, every two months, whatever it is, then it gives the spice into the relationship. Now I know, sometimes Nando's is good. You don't always have to be hanging from the ceiling, buying a rope, having a pole, you know, having to get dressed every single time in your leathers. It doesn't always have to go down like that. But learning helps you guys to explore and it may be the thing that helps you find your new style. Helps you find out that, hey, I love dominating. Oh, you know what? I love being wooed. That I get turned on by words or that I get turned on by physical touch. You don't know those things until you explore. You won't know what you like until you try it, right? Now I want to know from all the wifeys, the ladies who got a ring on it, how have you guys fared when it comes to the sex talk? Do you guys talk about it often? Have you never talked about it before? Are you curious about talking about it? Don't be shy. Like I said, it is so common to be shy about it. It is so common for them to be awkward. It is extremely common that couples have been married for years and they actually haven't had those conversations. It's an important part of the relationship. And it's an important part not only because your man needs to be pleased, it's an important part because you, Mahani, you need to be pleased every single time. You deserve it. And the only way you're gonna make that happen is if you guys talk about it together. Now, if you want more videos like this, then give me a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comment box down below if there's anything that stood out for you. I'd really like to get this conversation going. But until next time, my beautiful people, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Kopana Shimange, and this is How I Do Things. Now, when it comes to confidence, we're not all born with it. Sometimes we may need to practice. Sometimes we need some knowledge to push us along. And other times we may need an affirmation to remind us of the strength that lies within us to be able to go and conquer our day and conquer the things that we need to get done. Now, if you want to build your confidence and you want those affirmations, those hacks, those steps to boosting your confidence, then head over to my website, kopanashimange.com and download my new free ebook on the seven hacks to boosting your confidence.